Today we'll be taking a look at Jennifer, episode 4 of Masters of Horror, despite looking at episode 13 the other day, because I lack the ability to count. Non-important life skills aside, this episode is directed by horror legend Dario Argento, known for his contribution towards the giallo genre, a genre which can best be described as Italians having a really bad day. Just like Takashi Miike, who created Imprint, which we covered in the last episode, this episode is directed by a non-native English speaker for an American audience, because subtitles are bad and they make my brain hurt. This episode begins with more pixelated blocks on screen than your average Minecraft video, due to its questionable original source more than likely being recorded on a potato. But unlike your average Minecraft video involving someone attempting to damage the brains of miners, two police officers, Frank and Spacey, have their lunch disturbed by a man attempting to damage the brains of a woman. Frank gets out of the car to see a man dragging a woman to the waterfront due to mistaking her for a fish, and right before he's able to cleave off her head, Frank fires a shot into him. After making sure that this man will never threaten a fish ever again, Frank approaches the woman to find her looking like one of the wrong turn boy's long lost sister, or perhaps mother, or maybe both. After bringing her back to the police station after this incident, he catches her staring at him through the glass, kind of like how I used to stare at the lingerie mannequins as a kid. I was a normal child. He returns home, feeling a little bit down after not getting that headshot earlier, and notices that he's got a cut on his hand from untying the woman earlier due to a run in with his arch nemesis the double knot, which for some reason gives Frank the motivation to start sucking the blood out of the wound as if he's some sort of self-cannibalistic vampire who is slightly thirsty. After his midnight snack, his wife Ruby starts coming onto him, but the only hole he's currently thinking about is the one he put in that guy's chest earlier. Not wanting to let something as little as the loss of a fragile human life get in the way of him getting off, he proceeds to do just that, except angrily, as for some reason he loses control and hurts his wife like the loving, caring husband that he is. Unfortunately for Frank, it's work policy to receive a psych evaluation after executing the mentally impaired, but at least he gets to learn the woman's name is Jennifer and that she's currently being held in a psychiatric facility for the evil crime of looking a bit weird. A psychiatric facility that Frank proceeds to visit, resulting in a big hug from Jennifer the moment she sees him, because nothing fills her with more joy than a man who's just shot someone. After realising that this isn't a very nice place for anybody to be staying, he for some reason takes it upon himself to check her out of the professionally trained and well equipped facility, to bring her back home to his not well trained and professionally equipped home, which I'm sure is only slightly illegal and definitely not ethically concerning at all. He doesn't tell his wife or son about it, because his perfect idea of a prank is jump scaring them with someone's hideous face, and he sets her up a place to sleep on the sofa, in which she returns the favour by wiping her mouth slobber all over him. She must be French. Once morning arrives, Frank wakes up to the rather annoying sound of a woman crying in his room, when suddenly Ruby walks in and screams after seeing her on account of having a phobia of the ugly. Ruby demands that Jennifer leaves at once due to having a rather low tolerance for the attractively impaired, to which Jennifer replies by biting her in the face. I told you she was French. After bringing this violent and unstable person into his home with his wife and son, with one of them already being physically harmed, Frank decides that perhaps taking her out of the well-equipped mental health facility probably wasn't the best thing he could have done and looks for somewhere else to take her, because I guess he's too embarrassed to take her back. But while they're in the car stopped, she grabs his hand once again and begins licking the Cheeto dust off it, with him doing very little to stop it this time. After she takes his hand and places it on her body, Jennifer gets on top of him and the pair proceed to have weird people sex. A scene that was originally far too explicit to be shown on American TV that resulted in it being edited down because sex is a sin and Jesus is watching. He's right behind you. With nowhere to take her, he brings her back to the house because I guess he just kind of forgot where he found her before finding her locked in the bathroom and ripping the family cat to shreds with her teeth. After she offers Frank his entrails as a cute little thank you gift, Ruby and their son leave because I guess Frank would rather quite literally stay with this random person who happens to have questionable snack choices. Frank, with his priorities very obviously in check, is paid a visit by Jennifer in the middle of the night again, in which she licks his face because of course she does, with the pair then sleeping together because Frank has really strange taste in women and definitely needs to see a therapist. The next day, while Frank is out doing normal people things, like not harbouring a strange cat-eating criminal in the house, Jennifer meets Frank's neighbour, a little girl named Amy. And after Jennifer meets Amy, Frank meets her too. As after coming home drunk and hearing the strange sound of a woman in his house, Frank opens the basement door to see Jennifer eating Amy. He starts strangling Jennifer because he always wanted to kill Amy but will now never get the chance, before letting go and falling to the floor while crying over spilt milk. 
well, spilt guts. Despite being a police officer, not sure what to do with the cannibalistic child consumer, he decides to head to the circus in town, which just so happens to have a sideshow attraction, because apparently it's the year 1920. Like the excellent police officer that he is, he offers to human traffic her with the circus owner and gives him a spare set of keys to his house to go and retrieve Jennifer. And sometime later, after returning to a now empty house that's rid of a problem that he brought here for literally no reason, he opens the fridge to find a problem. A big one. Inside the fridge, he finds the circus owner sitting in a rather uncomfortable position before breaking out in hysterical laughter, just like a normal person would. And speaking of normal people, Jennifer is watching from outside and starts clapping with excitement due to Frank liking the leftovers she prepared for him. After burying the body for a woman that he hardly knows, Frank drives them both out into the woods. But instead of finally putting a stop to this madness, Frank proceeds to continue with the madness as they're both going to live together in a secluded remote cabin where they can eat all of the cats and little children they like. That night, Frank gets drunk and Jennifer takes advantage of him like some kind of deranged monster, with Frank heading into town the next day to find a job because oh yeah, he abandoned his entire family and his life to go live in a garden shed. He manages to get a job at a local store stacking shelves, but being the slightly weird girlfriend that she is, Jennifer spies on him as he's talking to his new boss Rose. So in retaliation for Frank daring to speak to a member of the human race who happens to be a female, Jennifer follows Rose's son Jack to a party in the woods. While there, she lures him deeper into the woods by just kind of existing, before suddenly turning around and strangling him because boys are gross. After finishing a late shift at his job, Frank returns home to the cabin to find Jack handcuffed in the cellar with Jennifer eating his genitals for an extra source of protein. Yet again, another scene that had to be cut down due to originally being far too graphic, with the original scene involving an on-screen castration, with the scene having to be castrated itself due to them realising they could only cut off his junk once. Frank, drawing the line at two dead kids, grabs an axe and drags Jennifer out into the woods, with him pulling her towards another body of water in a scene that's reminiscent of the first time he ever encountered her, and ties her up to a tree stump because I guess it would be a pain to clean it out of the cabin, and is just about to swing his axe into her neck when suddenly he's shot by a hunter right before he can end it. Much like Frank did with the man at the very beginning of the episode, the hunter has killed her attacker mere seconds before being killed, with her then reaching her hand out to the man, with the cycle being doomed to repeat itself because guys seem to like them a little unhinged. So before this video comes to an end, I'd like to just give a big shout out and a massive thank you to all of the YouTube members and patrons, the people who every month continue to go out of their way and support the channel. If you're interested in becoming a YouTube member or a patron yourself, not only are you just generally being a big help, but you also get access to a few little bonuses, like being able to join the private Discord server, where you can then get access to uncensored versions of all videos going forwards. So starting off with this week's new YouTube signups, a massive thank you to Mr. Smiles, Dre Scramble, Burst Panther, Booked Splash, Bibe Have Sharma, Amiruku, Ares, Civitas Stems, Dade First, Pascal Pochel, V Cone, and Taigi. Now heading over to this week's new Patreon signups, a massive thank you to Evan Martin, Alex, Gray's Library, Eris Forley, Jazz, Pepe is God, Charlie Satchwell, Diali, Scribbling Will, Dichimaru, Jackson Aharu, George S, Luke Hayden, Ryan Grobola, Deirdre Joy, Handon Cherry, Brittany Acosta, Jackson Rodriguez, Michael himself, Justin Reefles, and Kevin Woodling. So once again, a massive shout out to all of the YouTube members and patrons, and a big thank you to everyone else for watching.